So good afternoon all. Hello. 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 Sir. Can you Yes. Okay. Can I start? Sir, I will Ah, okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. So I think last time we discussed up to hyponatremia. So we'll start with hyponatremia today. So can I ask few questions about last class? Hyponatremia. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. I, I, I think I give some homework for you people, right? No? Hello? Hello? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I give some sir. homework to you people, right? To read. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, so we start hyponatremia. Okay, sir. So it's, it's slides uh, appearing. Yes, Lights appearing? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, hypernatremia is sodium more than 145 and anything more than 160. Just one minute. Okay, sir. Sodium, anything above 160, uh, already we discussed it. Mm, so, hypertonicity, hypertonicity will uh, cause linkage of the uh, neurons. So, that way can lead to your vascular rupture, lead to bleeding, devilation, and uh, permanent neural injury is the main concern here. So, when it's uh, appearing chronic uh, hypon hyponatremia, when it uh, occurs more than 48 hours, it will be less symptomatic than the acute hyponatremia. So, yes. Sure. So clinical features, so child will be irritable, restless, and followed by vomiting, and then finally child had seizures, altered cell so Causes, what are the causes of hyponatremia? Dehydration due to diarrhea. Sir, GI losses, sir. Okay, only one GI losses. That's all. No renal losses. Yes, sir. Yeah, what are the renal losses? Hypernatremia, you need to remove one condition, which is the strongest condition. Diabetes insufficiency. Yes. So, anything you need to uh, see like proportion with the water, whether it is a water loss or any sodium excess or disproportionately both are excess. That is what you need to think. So, 
you need to classify them again into hypovolemic, normovolemic, and hypervolemic. So, what are causes you are telling is hypovolemic. So, GI losses and uh, renal losses, where only the water is losing and the sodium loss is very less. So, that's why you get hypernatremia. And uh, normovolemic, uh, you cause like hyperventilation, fever, uh, your water will be not, not at much loss in and sodium will be retained. So, they will have uh, hypernatremia. And hypervolemic is basically when you are so giving 3% NS, when you are giving bicarb corrections, your primary hyperaldosteronism, so it, it all will cause hypervolemia along with excess sodium and it will cause hypervolemic hyponatremia. But the commonest, commonest, commonest things what you encounter in a clinical scenario is uh, hypovolemic hyponatremia and hypervolemic hyponatremia is basically in ICU setups. So when you are treating in a uh, uh, ICP child with 3% NS or metabolic uh, atherosclerosis child with bicarb connections. So there are two iatrogenic causes. But the normal conditions still coming to you with hyponatremia will occur only as hypovolemic hyponatremia. Rarely you encounter hypervolemic. Uh, so whenever you encounter hypernatremia child, look for the hypovolemic causes. Child is saying hypovolemia or not. If hypovolemia is there, look for the GI causes or renal causes. The evaluation is very important. So basically, it is commonly seen in the infants, mainly in uh, neonates, where the feeding is the main problem. So you need to see how they are giving feeding. So sometimes they give cow's milk directly, more sodium, and how much feeding they are giving, inadequate feeding, again, they cause hypernatremia. So the dilution of the feed and uh, uh, how much amount they are giving is very important when you are taking history. And you will ask for fluid losses, whether the loss in the GI, uh, renal, or skin losses, and whether any medications the child was on, like nodosis, syrups. So you need to take the history like that. The most important second thing is when you're evaluating the child, is what the hydration status is. That's what I'm telling. So hypovolemic hypernatremia is the most common condition we encounter in the clinical situation. The investigations, osmolarity, reattend. And basic investigation like blood sugars, electrolytic chain will be very in hypernatomic dehydration. And so, what you need to see is whether the urine osmolality is less than the serum osmolality. If urine osmolality is less than serum osmolality, then the losses are in the kidney. When urine osmolality is higher than serum osmolality, that means urine and kidneys are trying to conserve the water. So, that is the losses are somewhere else in the kidney, not in the kidney. So, based on this uh, pale the osmolality, you can easily differentiate where is the losses, whether the renal losses or it is the uh, GA losses. But it is not needed when you take proper history and uh, examination. By that itself, you can finish this. No need for doing all these investigations. But to confirm uh, diabetes insipidus, you need all these investigations. So, management, how will manage hypernatomic dehydration? This already discussed in the previous classes. Hypernatomic dehydration. How are you going to start the fluids? How what fluid are you going to start? Depending on the level of sodium. Yeah. Duration of the therapy varies. Yeah, good. So depending on the level of sodium, you need to correct it slowly. So minimum minimum duration is. 24 hours. Yeah. So hypernatremia, symptomatic hypernatremia, you at least for 48 hours you need to take time to correct. So normal is sodium. So asymptomatic 150, 155, you can correct it rapidly. But symptomatic more than 155, 160, you need to correct it very slowly and over 48 hours you need to correct. But if it's very high, like 190 is 200, you need to correct it very slowly, like 96 hours also. So what fluid you are going to start? How much fluid? What fluid? These are two important questions in hypernatremia. What fluid? Say you have a child with a sodium of 190. So what fluid you are going to start? Uh, 
What is the sodium con con content in half an hour? Point four five percent. In numbers. Milli equal to liter. Seventy seven. Ah, seventy seven. Good. So, what is the serum sodium concentration here? One nine. So, what is the difference between your half NS and serum sodium? It's very high. So, what is the concentration of sodium in NS? Okay, so your even your NS is hypotonic to the body osmolality. Yes, sir. If you are getting my point here, yes, so sir. 190 is very high osmolality compared to even to NS. So here my choice is to start NS, not half NS. But we'll monitor. You start whatever you will, but you need to close monitoring. So like hyponatremia management, even hypernatremia management, the main crux is not about starting what fluid and how much fluid. It's about monitoring. So close monitoring every fourth hour at least. Then you need to decide about titrating the fluid up or down, changing the concentration. So that is what we need to practice here. And what is the fluid rate you're going to start? How much fluid? Forgotten. One point two five to one point five times the maintenance. That's all. You no need to calculate anything here. No free water calculation. No deficit calculation. Nothing is needed here. So blindly you need to follow. So for normal maintenance, you increase it by twenty five percent to fifty percent. That's all. And fluid, so if your sodium is near 160 to 165, you can start half NS. But ideally, when sodium is very high, above 170, better to start DNS uh, with a, a DNS. So uh, again, monitoring when your sodium is dropping very rapidly, so you need to change the concentration, decrease the rate. First, to change the concentration, then decrease the rate. One minute. Yes. So first thing you need to decrease is uh, you have to increase the sodium concentration. If you are on uh, DNS also, if your um, sodium is dropping rapidly, then you need to decrease the fluid rate. If your sodium is uh, not decreasing uh, as you expected, then you need to decrease sodium concentration first, not the fluid. But even after changing to half DNS or one fourth DNS, if you even after sodium is not dropping, then you need to increase the fluid rate. So 
So this one first thing is concentration to be touched, and the last thing is rate. So that is what the principle will follow in hypernatremic dehydration. Again, here we should not drop the sodium anything more than 12 per day. So when your hypernatremia is not due to because of fluid loss, it's because of sodium excess. So then you need the main aim here is to reduce the sodium intake first, then change the fluid to hypotonic fluid, either one fourth uh, half D and half NS or one fourth NS. Even after that, chill is not uh, get reading of sodium and chill is becoming fluid overloaded. Then you might need a dialysis for this chill, especially we'll deal the situation in metabolic acidosis. IEM is presenting with metabolic acidosis where you are dumping sodium bicarb infusions, hypernatremia, and we are not able to tell you develop AKA and are not able to get rid of all these things. Their dialysis is needed. So this is the case scenario. So I think uh, you all has to uh, write, take a paper and write a treatment protocol for this child. So five minutes, I'm going to give time for you. So after five minutes only, I'll talk with you. So you some detailed uh, So this is the sodium value. So this is a scenario. Child is in shock, 19 day old child. So weight is 3 kg. Child is in hypotensive shock. And we're given a, a, a terminal for kg bolus with that BP control. After controlling BP, this is the vitals. This is the values. Just give me five minutes. Uh, you need to write and then only I will come.
Sorry, uh, over. Uh. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you tell me? In this question, hmm. uh, the baby was in shock, sir. Yeah. So, how do you think that the Amanapur is a ball? Ah, it's 15. 60 ml NS bolus over 20 minutes. First, we have to give some. Already, I've given 30 ml per kg. See the last line here. 17 ml of half NS over 24 hours. 17 ml of half NS. NS, sir. Okay, how you got 17 ml? Sir, the weight is 2.2 kg, 19 day old uh, neonate. Uh, we took 150 ml per kg per yeah. day of food. That's that's what I'm expecting. Oh, its weight, current weight is 2.2, but the birth weight. What is the birth weight? 3 kg. So the 2.2 is due to because of? Dehydrations. Dehydration. So you cannot take that weight. Okay, sir. So you need to take the weight of 3 kgs. That is the first thing hmm, you need to know. Yes. So all calculations in dehydration is for baseline weight, not for the current weight. Okay, sir. Okay. So uh, it's not 17, I think it will come a little more. So 150 ml per kg into 3, that is what your maintenance. So, for that, you need to add extra 1.25%. So, remember 50%. Don't get confused with 25 or 50. Remember 50%. So, always give little higher fluid. So, 1.5 times. So, 150 ml per kg plus 75 ml per kg. So, 225 ml per kg is the fluid. Per day fluid, this is not for 48 hours. Yes, sir. I think you got, people got what I'm telling. This is for per day fluid. So per yes, day, you need to give 225 ml per kg for this child. Per kg is for 3 kg, not for 2.2 kgs. Yes, sir. Okay. So you start at some 25 ml per hour. Per day. Yes, sir. Okay. Then after 4 hours, you repeated sodium. So this is the starting sodium and after 4 hours you repeated sodium, sodium was 172. Sir, we can reduce the fluid rate. Or we can reduce the fluid rate. Okay, but first thing is concentration. Why are you are touching rate? Yes, sir, we can increase the concentration. So you are on what fluid? Sir? You are on what fluid now? N. Uh, how can you increase concentration of NS? What else fluid do you have more than NS? 
No idea, sir. So one thing is you can add three percent NS into your NS bottle, the DNS bottle. So how much to be added depending on the final sodium concentration? How much one ml three percent NS contains? One ml three percent NS and how many milliequivalents? Point five. Point five milliequivalents. So now your NS contains one fifty four milliequivalents, right? Yes, sir. So I need to make it to around 165, roughly. I'm telling you, I'm not talking uh, why this 165, I can go to 170 also. No? You can argue. But why? what I'm telling is between 155 and 175, I'm going to target somewhere around 160 to 165. So to make 154 to 165, how much ML of 3% I have to add? 1 ml. 1 ml. 1 154 to 165, how much amount of 3% NS I have to add? 22 ml. Exactly. So I think you people got my point. Yes. Yeah, that is the one way of uh, adjusting the okay. Little easier way is to run the 3% NS simultaneously. Don't need to disturb this adding masala, you cannot do. You can just add extra 3% NS uh, one in separate line or uh, same line. You can put a 3 way and add. So that how much amount you need to add that depends on the final concentration again. So you are giving 154. So you need to uh, make it like 165. So per day I need this much. So this much amount ML of 3% NS. So in that by 24, I will divide. I will run let's say 2 ml per hour, 3 ml per hour of 3 say 20, you, are, you are getting 28 ml of uh, total fluid. In that say 24 ml, I will run uh, N, NS and the remaining 4 ml, I will run 3% NS. It's all based on your uh, values. It, it's not like uh, stick to number. I, I need to give only this much on 3% NS. You can go to you start with 2 ml, repeat next value, and you can titrate it based on the uh, repeat sodium. It is no uh, straightforward answers for uh, how much amount of uh, this amount of amount of that? It's all based on your values. So you start with nearby value, see the repeat sodium. So repeat sodium is still dropping, little increase. If sodium is not dropping, you decrease. So based on this, you need to keep titrating your fluids. That is the first scenario. Second scenario is sodium is not dropping. So you repeated after after four hours, the sodium is still one seventy five. The sodium is still 175. So what are you going to do? We can increase the rate of fluid or we can decrease the first sodium. Time, you don't touch the rate. So you, you cannot touch the rate. What is the first to go? Decrease sodium concentration. How much? Half and miss. Okay, so never go to half NS from NS. So always, always maintain in between. So don't jump from one extreme to other extreme. That's what I'm telling. So here you need to give three fourth NS. How to create three fourth NS? One fourth plus three percent NS. So here are the same principle. 28 ml, if you got 14 ml of uh, half DNS, 14 ml of DNS. I think people got what I am telling. Yes. So you are giving half of half DNS, half of DNS. So both average you make, it will come as 3 fourth NS. 
so that is the way of uh, manipulating fluids you, you cannot keep changing the fluid preparation every time with the uh, change in sodium so every fourth hour if you keep changing the sodium uh, fluid bottle it's really difficult for the system to manage that's why always try to keep two bottles with you and you manipulate the two bottles in the weight so say after two hour, if, if you are three four turns after four hours your sodium is still dropping rapidly what you can do increase the sodium concentration how Sir, is it uh, decreasing too rapidly? No, it is not decreasing. Ah, it is decreasing only rapidly. Then we can. Nah, you told your answer is correct. To increase the sodium concentration, how to increase sodium concentration? I'm asking. Administer three percent tennis. Huh? You cannot administer three percent tennis. You have two fluids. One is half DNS, one is DNS. And you need to adjust them only. DNS. Yeah, you are you are on fourteen ml of half DNS, fourteen ml of DNS. Fourteen, fourteen ml. So how how to increase the sodium concentration now? To decrease the rapid fall. Complete DNS. On DNS, it is not decreasing. On DNS, it is the same. So you decrease it to three four turns. But on three four turns, it is decreasing rapidly. So you need to make a value in between three four turns and DNS. So you increase the fluid rate of DNS. DNS you make twenty one ml. Remaining seven ml you give half DNS. That's why you are making nearest to the. It's not DNS, but it's near to the uh, in between three uh, fourth DNS and DNS. If people understand what I'm talking. Yes, sir. On DNS, your sodium is not dropping. That's why you decrease the concentration to three fourth. So three fourth, how you made? You added three half DNS, half and DNS half door. Now you are giving like three fourth concentration. This average, average of NS plus half is three fourth. Now with three fourth, this is rapid drop. That's why I I need to avoid the rapid drop. I need to increase sodium concentration. I cannot go back to DNS again because DNS is not dropping. So I need to hold the can sodium constant in between three fourth and DNS. So three fourth and NS. So I need to increase the concentration towards NS. That's why I will make the twenty one ml of uh, DNS and seven ml of half NS. Is it clear? Yes. So that is the way you need to manipulate your sodium uh, uh, concentrations, not by changing the bottle every time. You you cannot keep loading the bottle with three percent NS adding to half NS. That is that is not a feasible method. So you need to give less work for the sisters. So you need to keep the two uh, bottles simultaneously, and you need to keep adjusting the rate of the bottle. So sodium is dropping rapidly. So you need to move towards NS. If sodium is not dropping rapidly, you move the rate uh, more of the half DNS. So like that, you need to keep manipulating. Got it? Yes. Sir. So that is about your hypernatremia. Any doubts in hypernatremia? I think if people understand what I am talking about hypernatremia management. Yes. There is no formulas here. It is just simple. You need to give one point two five to one point five times the maintenance. That's all. There is no no need for calculate anything here. So just start with one point five times. If sodium is way above, like more than one seventy, start with DNS. If sodium is around one sixty to one sixty five, you can start with half DNS. But monitor. You need to monitor four hourly, and depending on the next repeat sodium value, first to try to minimize the concentration or maximize the concentration. Then only you need to test the fluid rate. Is it decreasing the rate, increasing the rate based on the sodium values?
Okay. Yes. Sir. And we move to next. Yes. Sir. So next thing is hypokalemia. So it is chapter three point five. Uh, you call it hypokalemia, and depending on the your so potassium value, it may be asymptomatic to severely symptomatic. So any value less than two is very uh, severe, and it can cause uh, uh, paralysis, and uh, you can cause respiratory arrest as well as arrhythmias and rhabdomyolysis. So don't neglect potassium. And the most common symptom you face with potassium is newborn having paralytic ileus, and uh, even children having paralytic ileus is the most common symptom, and it can start even with uh, as less as three. So uh, never uh, uh, think that hypokalemia can be safer. Than hyperkalemia, but even hypokalemia can cause symptoms. And ECG changes. What are the main ECG changes in hypokalemia? So moderate uh, hypokalemia it can cause ST depression, T wave flattening, and uh, you can get U waves. And severe hypokalemia can have severe ST depression, and an inverted T waves will be there. If you see an inverted T wave in ACG, that's an emergency you need to rush and cut the potassium. So don't see U wave, don't take U wave as a T wave. So any negative wave uh, after followed by your QRS, you need to take it as T wave only, T wave inversion. So sometimes it's a mistake in that you take U wave as a, a T wave. That's a very common mistake. So never ever, there should not be no negative deflection uh, after QRS. If two positive deflections are there, you can easily identify. But if you have one negative deflection followed by positive deflection, many times we'll take positive deflection T wave and we'll mistakenly we'll tell it is less hypokalemia. It's a T inversion. T inversion is an emergency. You should not you should not waste time there. So the common causes again decrease in intake, increase in losses. Increase in losses could be GA losses and renal losses because of diuretics. And uh, shifts, transfer shifts will be due to your alkalosis, uh, glucose, insulin infusions, diabetic ketoacidosis, and many medicines can cause hypokalemia. So go read about other. So this is the approach for hypokalemia. So you need to have urine potassium. So urine potassium, and ideally you need urine creatinine as well. So if urine potassium loss is less, it's less than 15 millimoles, then the loss is not due to the kidney, it is mainly extra renal. But if you have urine potassium more than 15, that means the losses are uh, from the kidney. So then you need to see what is the uh, plasma bicarbonate with alkalosis or acidosis. So if uh, it is acidosis, uh, you need to think about RTS. RTS is the uh, most common uh, from uh, your gastrointestinal losses and drugs. And if it's not uh, uh, acidosis, it's alkalosis. So you need to think about uh, other losses like vomiting, vomiting, where you have a lot of acid losses from the body, along with the potassium loss will be there. So it can cause alkalosis. And very rarely congenital conditions like waters and vitamins, but it, it's mainly in failure to put a child uh, in uh, chronic plantation. Acute plantations, it may not be waters uh, and vitamins. And if you have uh, hypertension and ECF is high, then you need to think of uh, your uh, mineralocortical excess syndromes. So, aldosterone excess syndromes, and all you need to think. So, potassium less than 15 in urine. Likely extra renal losses. Potassium more than 15 in the uh, urine, it is mainly renal losses. And one exception here is vomiting. So, uh, because of vomiting, there will be more of amount of uh, H plus loss uh, in the vomiting. The body is uh, uh, try to conserve uh, your uh, H plus. So, there you can potassium can be uh, loosened.
aims of treatment so you need to prevent the lesser complications and you don't rise the symptoms very rapidly you, you need to correct it very slowly if any rapid rise can trigger the arrhythmias and you need to diagnose and cut the underlying cause it's very important you don't know you keep on correcting potassium if you don't cut the underlying cause it's not going to So potassium is two point four. So I will manage this child. Six months old, loose tools, and suddenly they notice that the child is having abdominal distension and the stoppage of loose tools. The abdomen is distended with absent and bowel sounds. Potassium is two point four. So how are you going to manage this child? What is the cause? First question, what is the cause? Hydration due to low stones. Okay. Extra renal losses of potassium. Okay. So what is the reason for gaseous distension of abdomen and offset of bowel sounds? Reason for gaseous distension of abdomen with option bowel sounds. Hmm? What is the reason? Answer is in front of you only. Panetic, I guess. Yeah. So any diarrhea child coming suddenly telling that I am getting the abdomen distance to stop it of loose tools. You should not think child is improving. So immediately you need to check for the potassium. So that's the commonest mistake from parents' side. They'll think the child is getting better. But sudden stoppage of loose tools is not a good sign. That too with abdominal distension. So be aware of this uh, hypokalemia. Hmm? So how are you going to manage this child now? 2.4 with paralytic ileus. Potassium. Oral potassium supplementation. Oral potassium supplementation when you don't have ball sounds. IV supplements. Oh, how to give IV? <coughs> 40 milliequivalents per liter. So you want to give 40 milliequivalents per liter. Okay. Why not uh, potassium casial correction? Why you want to use just only 40 milliequivalents per liter? 
potassium? How much is the maximum of so potassium concentration you can go in peripheral line? 80, sir. Okay. Any reference for that? So we'll have a management algorithm for hypokalemia. If you have hypokalemia, so if it's mild hypokalemia, just you need to increase the maintenance potassium. Like what you are talking about from 20 milli equivalents, you can go to 30 milli equivalents or 40 milli equivalents. Chalice are taking oral uh, feeds well. You can increase the sodium uh, intake by giving port load syrup. So you start with the extra, what is the normal maintenance potassium for body per day? Three to four milliequilons. Three to four. It is one to two milliequilons. So normal maintenance is one to two milliequilons. Say fix for two milliequilons. So two milliequilons per kg per day is the normal maintenance. So when you want to increase maintenance, you need to go above this. You cannot give only two milliequilons per kg per day until I am giving uh, extra for the child. It's not extra. That two milliequilons is for maintaining potassium. If the child is already having hypokalemia, your maintenance is not going to be sufficient. You need to give extra maintenance. I think this point, everyone agree with me? Yes, sir. Hmm? I have seen many times, <coughs> not on feeds, child is on IV fluids without maintenance potassium. And we do the potassium, potassium is around 3.1. And what we do is we will just add 5 ml of KCL to 500 ml, that is 20 millimoles. Is it correct? Chilo has an IV fluids, no oral intake. In IV fluids, there is no potassium, maintenance potassium at all, zero maintenance potassium. And we repeated potassium, it's potassium 3.1. And people are adding 5 ml KCL to the IV fluid. Is it correct? No, sir. What is correct? How much you need to add? Okay. Adding 5 ml to 500 ml, it will give 20 millimoles. That is, per day maintenance is 2 millimoles. It will come to roughly 2 milli equivalents per kg per day. So you calculate. This is about all about calculations. So 20 millimoles in 500 ml is normal maintenance. That will give 2 milli equivalents per kg per day. So when you have hypokalemia with you, you cannot just give maintenance. Maintenance is for maintaining normal potassium. Here our deficit is there. So you need to go up. So you go up to 7.5 milli equal, uh, sorry, uh, 30 millimole or uh, 7.5 ml. So at least that is the basic. So even after that, your potassium is not rising, then you can go to 40 millimoles or 10 ml, 500 ml bottle. So that is what you need to do for mild. If chain is to take orally, you do extra. You see how much is the oral potassium is in the food formula feed. You need to calculate potassium, how much is taking. You cannot just simply add a port cord syrup and uh, give two ml port cord syrup like that. So you need to calculate the food, how much amount of the potassium is there in the food or formula of feed. How much extra I have to supplement. Usually we'll start with extra of one to two milliequivalents per kg per day. So if it's taking one milliequivalent per kg per day, we'll give extra two milliequivalents. 
If child is taking already two milli equivalents, we'll start with extra one milli equivalent. Based on the next potassium, we're going to titrate it up or down. So this is for mild cases. Moderate cases and symptomatic cases, you need to give oral replacement. But main contraindication to oral is your paralytic ileus. If you have paralytic ileus, you don't know how much is the absorption going to happen. But if you have um, like muzzle cramps because of hypokalemia and potassium is around 2.7 to 2.8, no ECG changes, then you can give oral when gut is functioning. When gut is not functioning like our scenario, you cannot give oral replacement there. At least you need to give some IV correction before you can change out to oral. But always, always oral potassium replacement is preferable, not IV. So when you're giving IV replacement, you need to have close cardiac monitoring until unless you don't have ECG monitoring with you, don't give IV corrections. So moderate, preferably oral, give oral replacement, one to milliliters per kg. So maximum you can give is one to that dose. Then you need to start the maintenance potassium, increase the potassium, maintenance potassium. So just to giving the replacement is not sufficient. You need to see what is the maintenance potassium child is getting, whether it's getting adequate potassium or not. If not, please increase it. Just to giving a, a single short dose is not going to benefit the child. So moderate hypokalemia, preferably oral correction, then followed by increasing the maintenance. That's what you need to do. But if you have ECD changes or severe hypokalemia or gut issue, try to give IV replacement. So IV replacement, how to give IV replacement? It depends on the severity. So the child is having severe uh, ECD changes, you need to go for IV correction. We'll see how much correction you're going to give. How much is the concentration of potassium in potassium chloride syrup, port chloride syrup? 15 ml, 20 ml. Each 15 ml has 20 ml equivalents. Exactly. So 1 ml gives 1.33 millimoles. So based on that, you need to calculate. How much 1 ml KCL injection contains? 2 ml equivalents. 2 ml equivalents. So your port chloride syrup has rapid absorption and you can expect your potassium rise within 2 hours. So this is what for mild to moderate cases you manage like this. So oral maintenance extra, if not taking orally, IV maintenance extra, not the normal maintenance, you need to give extra maintenance. And if hypokalemia, you need to give oral correction. If child is not able to take orally, go for IV correction and increase in the maintenance. And severe ECG changes, the child is sick, you need to go for IV correction. So how to give IV replacement? The main, main disadvantage of IV replacement is it can cause cardiac arrest. Even before you go into reach hyperkalemia side, potassium of 5 or 6, rapid increase from uh, 2 to 3.5 to 4 also can uh, trigger the main problem. Not about your uh, hyperkalemia, potassium of 4, 5 or 6. Rapid rise from uh, 2 to 4, that is what the main trigger for arrhythmia. So you need to cut them very slowly. So this is what will give uh, inclusion like. So if the child is in a ward without cardiac monitoring, so you can uh, give very slow correction like 0 0.2 millimoles per kg per hour. So for three to four hours, you can give and then you can recheck the potassium and you can increase the maintenance dose. Maintenance dose, you can increase to one to four milligrams per kg per day. But if sir, yeah. sir, can you please wait for five minutes, sir? Connection was lost here. Yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. 
start broadcast kasi pa ito okay okay sir sir thank you sir you can continue now sir. yeah so uh, in, in, in critical area like if i i should set up you can go at a maximum of 0.4 millimoles per kg per hour so for 0.4 millimoles per kg per hour how to write the prescription how you write the prescription for this you cannot tell you cannot tell the sister to uh, give 0.4 millimoles per kg per hour so they say 10 kg child how you write the prescription for 10 kg child to give 0.4 uh, millimoles per kg per hour how do you go to write
it's mass only i am not asking anything it's just mass you need to calculate you have to calculate one liter contains 80 millimoles so for 4 millimoles how much ml needed Fifty, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. Understood. So you need to write the prescription that take two ml KCL, mix it in fifty ml of NS, give it slowly over one hour, or you can give for two hours also. Is it clear what I am telling? Is it doubt here? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. So, but my reference is it's only 60 ml, 60 millimoles per liter. Can you prefer line? Sandrani can go up to 120. This is what my reference this is mainly from RCH and uh, UK guidelines. I don't know what is the reference for 80 millimoles. So here you need to dilute at least 30 times. So for 2 ml, you need to give 60 ml NS. If you have center line, you can decrease the dilution. The main problem here is if you have more dilutions, you can cause fluid overload. So that is the main problem with potassium. But if you don't give adequate dilution, it will cause the thromophlogitis and extravasation, it can cause tissue necrosis. So you need to avoid that also. So remember that potassium should be diluted adequately. You cannot give concentrated potassium. That's the first thing you need to remember when you're giving IV. And the maximum concentration according to my sources is 60 millimoles. If you have a reference for 80 millimoles, you can follow that thing. And center line up to 120 millimoles. So the calculation is very simple. So you need to calculate based on your uh, child weight. If you have uh, uh, close monitoring, you can go up to 0.4 millimoles per kg per hour. If you don't have close monitoring, restrict yourself to 0.2 millimoles per kg per hour. And uh, how to uh, dilute it and also it depends on your um, peripheral and central line. Clear? Yes, sir. And every hour you need to repeat the potassium. When you are giving IV correction, Every yeah, hour you need to uh, start repeating potassium. You cannot uh, sit right. You need to keep monitoring potassium and you can uh, start potassium replacement when the symptoms are reduced or potassium for the critical value. Like you start correction at 1.9 potassium, cell is having easy changes and paralysis. And you keep giving correction. And by end of third hour or fourth hour, your potassium reaches 2.5 and cell is getting better. ECG is normalizing. Paralysis is getting better, then you have to stop the correction there. Then you can switch over to either oral correction or increasing the maintenance, extra maintenance, giving extra maintenance to the IV fluids. So, so you are on uh, uh, 20 millimoles of normal maintenance along with the correction. At the end of the correction of four hours, you can increase the normal maintenance to 40 millimoles. So the rest of the rest of the correction can happen slowly. Once the critical critical uh, nature of the hypokalemia is corrected, rest of the moderate to mild hypokalemia can be corrected slowly based on the previous chart. You can come back and follow the same thing, mild to moderate algorithm. In severe algorithm, we started IV replacement. And what is the end point of IV replacement? Not the normalization of potassium. You should not normalize potassium with IV replacement alone. So you need to uh, stop the correction once you reach the moderate value. And symptoms are getting better, ECG changes are normalized. Once ECG is normalized, you stop IV correction. Switch over to oral correction if Chile is able to take orally. If Chile is unable to take orally, give IV replacement as a part of increased maintenance. Increase the maintenance from 2 milli equivalents to 4 milli equivalents, that is 20 ml to 40 ml. Sorry, 20 millimoles to 40 millimoles per liter. I think I am clear what I am talking because hypokalemia is the commonest, second commonest after uh, you are going to get, and then the maintain management is very important. You should know where to give IV correction, where to give oral correction, how much to give. Any doubts here? No, sir. And very crucial thing is monitoring potassium. 
you cannot keep giving potassium supplements without monitoring if child is on oral potassium supplements you keep monitoring potassium at least 12 hourly uh, based on the value and how much some of the supplements and if the supplements requirement is high you can you can you can increase the frequency of monitoring but never give potassium supplements without monitoring it can cause severe hyperkalemia no doubts here no sir uh, if no doubts we will go to the case scenario so you have a uh, 10 year old child it came with uh, weakness of both lower limbs 10 year old child came with weakness of both lower limbs and you did uh, electrolytes electrolytes potassium was 1.9 10 year old 40 kg severe lower limb paralysis potassium was 1.9 ecg showing t wave inversion with u wave abg showing metabolic acidosis so what could be the likely cause how you going to manage this child Severe metabolic acid in ABG, daily sign of short stature also. Sir, with the uh, ECG monitoring, uh, we keep 60 millicolons in one liter, sir. That is 8 ml KCL in 240 ml. First, what is the cause? Hypokalemic periodic paralysis. So, hypokalemic periodic metabolic acidosis, short stature. RTA, sir. Yeah. Good. So, how to correct now? 8 ml KCL in 250 ml lens. 8 ml KCL in 250 ml. Okay, 8 into 3 times. Over? Yes, sir. Over. How much time? Over one hour, sir. Okay, then next. Sir, 
Correction, what, what happened next? What are you going to do? Sir, can you just wait for two minutes, sir? We have lost the connection. It's okay. My voice is audible. Uh, yes, sir. Now it is audible, sir. And then you can tell us what is going to what are we going to do next? Give you correction. Hello, sir. One minute. Ah, sir. Yeah, next. What are you going to do? You given correction eight ml and two fifty ml and that's over one hour. Okay, fine. Very good. After one hour, we'll repeat the uh, potassium values. Okay, good. So, how much time is going to take for the potassium to come into the hospital? One, one hour, sir. Okay, fine. Very good. This one hour, you can just wait. Or you want to do something? Want to do something. <laughs> ECG monitoring, sir. It is still showing uh, T wave inversion. Then, then ECG is still showing T wave inversion. Child is still having paralysis. We will continue. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So when you have ECG monitoring, you need to stop and wait for the negative value report to come. If child is symptomatic better, then you can wait for the report to come. If child is still symptomatic and your ECG is still showing changes, you need to continue the correction, and, but you need to send in the samples in between. You cannot stop the uh, correction and send the sample, then the report comes in, I can restart. It's an emergency, right? Your ECG changes are there, means child can go for any uh, arrhythmia at any point of time. Hmm? So keep continuing the correction, but don't allow the uh, ECG to become normal. Once ECG become normal, then you uh, setting sodium, uh, sorry, potassium, and then continuing correction is not good. So if the ECG changes uh, is still there and child is still uh, paralytic, then you can continue correction, but keep repeating the potassium and titrate your correction. If potassium is rising up, then you don't need to be for this 0.4 millimoles. You can come down. You can come down to 0.3 or 0.2. That is what, depending on your sodium potassium, a bit value. 
you can keep decreasing the correction accordingly. Once it reaches 2.5, this is subsided, then safely you can stop. Okay. So after six hours, you corrected this potassium and potassium now is 3.1. You stopped all the uh, IV corrections and uh, Kale is able to take orally. You uh, listen carefully. So after six hours, the potassium is 3.1. Paralysis improved. Chale is able to take orally. So you want to uh, send this chale home. So how you are going to send this chale home? Or what medications? Oral potassium supplementation. Okay, how? Can you explain me how to go to give potassium supplementation for this chale? 2 millimoles per kg. 2 millimoles per kg. So how much? Like 20 um, 80 millimoles, 40 ml. Hmm. So 40 ml, how? How do you say 40 ml? 60 40 ml, 4 times. Uh, 40 ml per day. Yeah, 40 ml per day only. How you will take 40 ml? Three times a day, sir. In three to four divided doses. I, I don't know. I'm a patient now. You need to explain me how I have to take. Mm. You need to explain very clearly how I have to take potassium syrup and how much ml. 20 ml per dose TID, sir. 20 ml. How? You told 40 ml per day. How come no 20 ml per dose TID? That is 60 ml now. 60 ml per day, sir. So 20 ml per dose TID. How do you take? Drink like that. From the bottle, 20 ml. How do people not prescribe potassium syrup to anyone? Yes, sir. How how to how to give? With the Juice, fruit juice. Liquid dilution. Even oral potassium citrate syrup is too concentrated. It can get irritated. So never ever ask the people to drink it directly. So that's a commonest mistake. So they will not drink it again. They want to drink it directly. So always yes. a glass of water. Either milk or juice is fine. But at least in a glass of water. So it is very concentrated and eatable one. So don't forget the even IV correction, you need to give very diluted. Oral potassium also you need to give very diluted, not the concentrated form. So potassium you need to dilute. That's the first thing you need to remember when you are managing hypotelemia. So based on your repeat potassium in your titrate, you cannot tell I'll give only two milli equivalents. The answer here is I will start with extra two milli equivalents. So the tail is taken normally, the intake. I will increase the normal uh, intake in the food to 2 milli equivalents based on what substance I need to take. And then I give potassium supplementation extra 2 milli equivalents per day, whatever kg per day. So, with that, if his potassium has reached to 3.5 to 3.6, okay, you can continue same. But if potassium is still low, like 3.2 to 3.3, what you have to do? You started extra 2 milli equivalents per kg per day, potassium is still 3.3. I was discussing so much. What is there to discuss? You're giving two milligrams extra, Chell is still needing. So, what I can do? Increase, increase the dose. That's all. Hmm? But the problem here is it's not about only potassium. The chili is having metabolic acidosis also. So how do you metabolic acidosis? Bicarbs. You need to give bicarb uh, tablet or syrup. The best way to give bicarb is to combine with potassium. Is there any combination of uh, bicarb with potassium? Uh, 
Uh, a molecule which is similar to bicar, or when it goes into the body, it can generate bicar, and it can be combined with the potassium, and it can give the combination syrup. Potassium citrate. So you have a combination of uh, these two things: potassium citrate, which uh, can release potassium, and citrate can go on like similar to citralka. You do for urinary alkylation, right? Uh, it's citralka is basically sodium uh, citrate, but we can have uh, uh, syrups where potassium citrate KC, KC is available. So there is a preferential one to view for this kind of children. For normal hypokalemia uh, due to your diuretic uh, use or some other diarrhea kind of thing, you can use uh, only KC here. But when combined with acidosis, try to view single uh, medications where potassium can be corrected and acidosis can be corrected. So, potassium citrate syrups are available. So, try to use them for a metabolic acidosis. Filter. So, I think I'm clear on hypokalemia management. Any doubts still now? Hypokalemia? No, sir. So, mild, just increase the maintenance. If chili is on maintenance, uh, 2 milliequivalents, you make it 3 milliequivalents or 4 milliequivalents. Whether you want to increase with the throw food or you want to increase extra throw case, that is up to you. Uh, port -port syrup. But never ever uh, just to give maintenance and think that it's going to increase. Because Chale is not taking maintenance previously, I'm going to give maintenance now, so it's going to correct it. Already you have deficit. Maintenance potassium is for maintaining potassium, normal potassium. But if you have deficit, you need to keep increasing the maintenance. You cannot keep on the maintenance only. That's the first thing you need to learn. Second thing, moderate hypokalemia, you need to correct orally only. 90% of it will be correctable orally only. Give a bolus dose, 1 to 2 milli equivalents of bolus dose, followed by increased maintenance, not the normal maintenance. <coughs> Always remember the commonest mistake is once you correct it, you're going to start on the maintenance. Always increase the maintenance. You can do extra maintenance to see the potassium is getting corrected smoothly. <coughs> If child is not able to take orally or child is severely symptomatic with ECG changes, then you need IV correction. If you have ICU area where you can monitor closely uh, ECG monitoring, you can go up to a maximum of 0.4 millimoles per kg per hour. But every hour you need to keep repeating the potassium. Give it till the time you reach the critical value of 2.5 or your ECG changes are corrected. Once it is getting corrected and the symptoms are better, you can switch over to oral corrections and increase the maintenance of oral or IV, depending on the child intake. So maximum concentration peripheral line is 60 millimoles. Maximum concentration central line is 120 millimoles. Based on that, you need to dilute your potassium injection. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So this is how you are going to manage, but key is monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. Until you monitor potassium, you should not repeat the next doses of your uh, uh, port or syrups or IV correction. So whenever child has an extra maintenance of potassium, you need to keep monitoring potassium. So we encode okay. children and we face cardiac arrest uh, because of this uh, not detecting potassium, not repeating potassium. So, child was on a port load syrup, and for three days they smoked potassium, and four days child got arrested. Then only we realized that it is hyperkalemia. Hmm? So, don't commit that kind of mistakes, what we already committed. So, all children on potassium supplement need potassium monitoring at least once daily. That's all. That is the lesson you need to learn. So, sodium management needs monitoring of sodium. Potassium management needs at least a daily monitoring of potassium. Yes. If no doubts, we'll stop the session here and next session we'll leave with hyperkalemia and uh, calcium, hypocalcemia. With that, we'll finish the electrolytes. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir.